Canadians first. Canadians first. All Canadians first. This is Nova Scotian maritime Canadian common sense to the core. And I know everyone here today that resonates with you. Rural Canada is the heart of tra traditional Canada. This is where our identity, the heart of our identity, our heritage, our cultural norms reside. Unfortunately, rural Canada is under attack. I want to share the truth tonight. And there's a saying by George Orwell I'm going to mention here. The further a society drifts from the truth, the more those people who speak the truth are hated. And I've been vilified a lot. I don't know if you folks have been reading it. A lot of it's, it's all lies. And the reason I'm being vilified, because I speak the truth. Because I want to serve you, serve this writing, serve this country. And it has to start with the truth and with the facts. And I'm going to share some right here. There's a myth about the immigration numbers coming in here by these mainstream career politicians, the mainstream parties. We're told in the media that it's 300,000 coming in. The real numbers through all streams, and I will provide this evidence to you, I encourage you to fact check it. It's over a million this year, migrants coming in through all streams. What this is doing to rural, rural Canada, it's displacing jobs. It's impacting the health care because it's putting strain on the welfare systems, the wait lines, more people need doctors. There's a study out of SFU, 40 billion a year taxation negative, new migrants to Canada. We're not against these people, but we say Canadians first. There's a study from Dr. Kaufman on the University of London. By 2100, traditional Canadians are going to plummet to 20% of this population. Your identity, your heritage, cultural norms are under attack right now through this mass migration without question. The debt is exploding. Since 1968, the Conservative Party has added 458.9 billion to the federal debt. They've averaged 23 billion deficits. Remember that one too. Well, thank you very much, Bill. And I want to thank all of you for attending tonight. Uh, as a member of Parliament between 2009 and 2015, I worked very hard for the people in the Wentworth Valley. We were able to deliver a, a huge grant for the Canada Games which was hosted by Ski Wentworth, and, and grants for several other buildings in the community, and I believe in, even including this one. Uh, that's the type of service that you want an MP to provide. Someone's gonna stand up for you and support your community when the community has a project or some sort of event they want supported. My door was always open. I worked with many community groups in the Wentworth Valley and along the North Shore. Uh, I'm a teacher by trade. I served in Town English Elementary as a principal in that community for 10 years. Worked very closely with the principal here in the Wentworth Valley, Pugwash, Oxford, a lot of the small communities in this area. But that was back when we used to have a school here in Wentworth. But we don't have a school anymore because the Liberal government closed it. And I can remember back as a child coming out here to ski and ski Wentworth and right along the Trans Canada Highway, the gateway to the rest of the province came right through the Wentworth Valley. But it doesn't happen anymore because the Liberals closed the highway and moved it to a toll highway. The Liberals also said at that time that the tolls would be taken down when that highway was paid for. Well, the highway's paid for and those tolls are still up. And your former MLA, Marie Scott, actually passed legislation that those tolls should come down. That's being ignored by the current Liberal government. So when you look back at what's happened in the Wentworth Valley, and you look at what government was in charge when things happened, you can see the Conservatives have built this area up and the Liberals continue to tear it down. If I'm selected as your MP and I win on October 21st, I'm going to go to Ottawa and fight for your community like I did before. And the biggest issue we're facing at the doors right now is health care. 
Myself and my team, we've been to over 30,000 doors in Cumberland Colchester since January. And 85% of those doors, the number one issue people are talking about is healthcare, the lack of a family doctor. This is a huge issue. If you do not have healthcare infrastructure, if you don't have a family doctor, why would you settle here and raise your family here? We're driving our doctors away with Trudeau's high taxes and Steve McNeil's low pay. Doctors are the highest tax in the country, in Nova Scotia, and they're paid the least. Nurse practitioners, the same. Nurses, the same. We need to treat our health care providers with respect if we want to have that infrastructure here. The economy and jobs. We need jobs in the rural areas. And right now, one of the major industries in the Wentworth Valley, which is a forestry industry, is under threat due to liberal mismanagement down in the city by Stephen McNeil. I will stand and fight for every rural job and every forestry worker in Nova Scotia and in Cumberland Colchester if I'm elected your MP. You can count on it. We need to make sure that people in Halifax know that forestry is important and needed here. Thank you very much. I look forward to discussing these issues. I traveled today in, uh, in, in the Studiac area with a veteran named Aaron O'Toole. He was the former Veterans Affairs Minister at the close of 2015. And Aaron has a very good relationship with veterans across the country. He and I had a talk today just about what we need to do to support veterans. It's unfortunate that even today, despite the social safety net that we do have in Canada, that we have literally thousands of veterans who are homeless across the country. Now there are supports in place. There are programs there to help them out. But one of the problems we face is many of them have PTSD, they're homeless, and they don't trust the government, they don't trust the support systems. And they're difficult to find. We need to have supports in place that help veterans who really can't help themselves. And that means we have to stand with the veterans, put programs in place, and actually find them and prefer the, the most important thing, good, safe housing. That's the first step. Because if they have a home, they can then get a job. But homes and housing are the first step. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, apologies there, the timer didn't give you the warning that it should have given, so the warning comes 30 seconds, Mark. It's a 60 second answer. Mr. Garvey. Something terrible happened to our veterans. I don't know if everyone here knows about it. When these mainstream parties were haggling over the pensions, this is something disgraceful they did. They took out the moral obligation to care for our veterans. Can you believe it? That was actually taken out of the Pension Act. NCA would honor the moral obligation to care for any veterans serving our country. We would reform the VRAB, Veterans Review and Appeal Board. Thousands, thousands of veterans are falling through the cracks who are injured. And these include RCMP, veterans in the country, not just abroad. And I've been to some of those hearings. It's disgraceful the way they're treated. We will reform that. 